Well, now let's move into our major story of the day. Lawyers, political analysts have said it several times on this show. Now, Senate President Bukola Saraki is reiterating it. The Senate President says the proscription and declaration of the indigenous people of Bihafra, IPUB, as a terrorist organization is illegal. And this is from his statement. And I quote uh, what he says now. I also wish to state that the announcement of the proscription of the group known as Indigenous People of the Afro IPA by governors of the Southeast states and the categorization of the group as a terrorist organization by the Nigerian military are uh, unconstitutional and does not follow due process. Well, Senator Saraki stands opposes uh, that of the governors of the region and the country's military on the matter. And to those saying that the declaration uh, made by the military is not constitutional, uh, and those questioning the operation of the military in the South East region, it, it seems now that the debate is getting more and more intense. Well, the Chief of Army Star, Lieutenant General Tukaburata, has a message for them. He said that the army is not under any form of threat to leave the region. General Burata announced that the Nigerian army will launch a special exercise across the country to maintain peace and security. The military chief also made it clear that only the federal government holds the jurisdiction to declare the IPOB leader in Namdekano wanted. Well, now, speaking of Namdekano, where is he? Not much has been heard of him since his group was declared a terrorist organization, which in turn has restored uh, some level of calmness to the region. Today, his group released a statement saying they will bounce back. The group said they are not backing down on their fight for an independent Biafra nation. According to them, no amount of intimidation would make them surrender their fight. And here are some questions we will attempt to uh, answer tonight on the program. Could the Senate President Bukola Saraki be speaking on behalf of the Senate? By bouncing back, is iPod coming rebranded, adopting a different approach, or operating under a tag enemy of the state? As it is right now, we have had lawmakers, law enforcers. Let's continue getting interpretations. <laughs> Joining us from our Abuja studio is a lawyer and second vice president of the Nigerian Bar Association, Onyekachi Ubani. And joining also on the program tonight from the United Kingdom is a political analyst, Kaudi Okundamisi. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on the program. Let's begin with uh, the lawyer on the program tonight because what the Senate president raised here is a matter of the law, perhaps not in the purview of uh, the security exigency. L let me ask, start by asking you, within the frame of our law, what exactly is the illegality that the pr Senate president is talking about that he said the military has committed here? Well, I, I think what the, the Senate president uh, is trying to say is that, look, there is a law that defines what constitutes uh, terrorism uh, in Nigeria, and that is the Terrorism Prevention Act of 2011, and I think there was an amendment of that act in 2013. Uh, that act in Section 1, Subsection 3, actually defines all the things that will make any organization in Nigeria to be a terrorist organization. It gave all the graphic explanation and definition of any organization that is engaged in all the acts that are actually defined by that act to be a terrorist uh, act. And also, the act itself provided a procedure for any organization to be dubbed uh, a terrorist organization or to be prescribed by any agency. And so, if you do not in any way follow the procedure that the law itself has outlined for you now to prescribe that organization, then that act will be regarded as illegal not in accordance with the law. Neither the military command uh, nor the governors of, or the governor of any state has any right under the law uh, as presently considered to call any organization a, a terrorist organization because the act itself set out the persons authorized by that act uh, and the procedure they have to follow. It's a judicial process actually. Uh, it is either the attorney general of the federation or the national security advisor or the, uh, the IGP, that is the Inspector General of Police, 
uh, with the approval of the president that can bring an application to a federal high court judge. And that means that that application will be taken in chambers. It means it will be taken ex parte. And then it's when you now present all that evidence, uh, I have said, you know, those acts that constitute a terrorist act before the court. It's a matter of evidence. The court will look at those, uh, whatever you are presented, and then goes ahead to make a pronouncement, after which that particular pronouncement of the court will be published in a, pub in a gazette, in an official gazette, or in two national newspapers, or in any other forum or forum that the court will prescribe. It's only when you have complied with that that you can now say that that particular organization is proscribed in accordance with the law. And why that law is made is this particular organization that has been proscribed has a right of bringing a further application before the court. I say no, the information that was given to you as a judge was wrong. We are not an illegal organization. We are not a terrorist organization. And look at the evidence to show that we are not. The court can also look at that evidence presented by that organization and reverse itself. You know, but when an organization that is not authorized under the law goes ahead now to proscribe that organization and, and, and pronounce it illegal or a terrorist organization, to which group are you going to go for a reversal of that order if there is no truth in whatever they have presented or whatever they have said? And so that is the danger in allowing any other body not authorized by law to uh, proscribe a, a, an organization. Let me quickly go to um, uh, Kaudi Ogunamisi. We heard the federal government come out yesterday to say uh, they've discovered that those sponsoring uh, IPOP, uh, those uh, they call coalition of uh, uh, political, uh, 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 I mean, treasury looters, uh, you were a former, uh, at, at a point in the history of this country, uh, you were a former member of uh, the Odua People's Congress, OPC, and there were a lot of controversies around that organization, too. As it stands right now, in the issue of security on one hand and the legality of, these, uh, of, of the action of the military, what do you make of the military's decision? Uh, plus, thank you, Sharon. I, I want to say that um, everyone who knows where I stand, oh, I oppose the ideology of um, IPOB. I oppose the fascist um, method in which IPOB is using to pursue its goals. And uh, I, I, I've always equated Nambekano um, to Hitler in Germany, who, of course, was a sergeant in the German army, but was able to mobilize a, more, a mass of angry people. Having said that, I do not think the Minister of Information is right to say uh, people who are sponsoring IPOB are politicians who are frustrated. It's just like going back to the days when um, the PDP also said the people sponsoring Boko Haram were politicians. Uh, in as much as I disagree with uh, uh, IPOB and their methods and their methodology, we have always insisted on this issue of true federalism. I was the founding secretary general of the OPC, uh, and these are the issues that were raised uh, on the OPC. And why do I oppose the methods of I, uh, IPOB today? Because as Secretary General of OPC, I saw how fruitless it was from my experience to lead young men and women uh, to untimely death, thinking you can challenge the muscles of the state without going through peaceful uh, process. I was involved in burying endless number of young people, young men and women, who of course believed in true federalism, but also uh, believed that they, they could face uh, the might of the federal government by resorting into violence. And today, the OPC stands on a reform because uh, those of us who said there was a need for a peaceful alternative to agitations at, at the day. Uh, regarding the military declaring um, IPOB as a terrorist unit, I think it's uh, the interpretation, whatever our opinion, including the opinion of the Senate president, will be left to be uh, taken to court and tested in court. Let me tell you who tested this, Asari Dokubo, in 2007, there was a case between Asare Dokubo and the Federal Republic of Nigeria, testing the legality of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, declaring Dokubo uh, uh, a terrorist. And the Supreme Court gave a, a, a verdict. So whatever opinion is of the lawyer, the lawyer in the studio in Abuja or the uh, Senate president or myself, let us test this democracy. Let lawyers go to court and see whether the federal government has done right, whether the president and commander-in-chief has got the power to, uh, uh, to send troops to a region where houses have been declared almost non grata mosques were burnt, policemen are being killed, and a young man has declared a republic independent of the Federal Republic of Nigeria.
Uh, but if you look at the situation and perhaps the, uh, the, 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 the process of declaring this kind of group a terrorist organization or prescribing it, if you look at it, and if you have, if, if you, for example, uh, the, uh, 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 the, the commander-in-chief of the armed forces, would you do the same? Well, you see, the commander-in-chief of the armed forces is responsible for all Nigerians. It is an, a huge irony, Sheung, that today all these so-called new human rights activists, the so-called Senate president, Ekwere Madu, the deputy Senate president, they forgot the rights of those Nigerians that were being threatened by this young man. They forgot the rights of Nigerians who live in the southeast, whose properties have been looted. They forgot the rights and privilege of Nigerians who were told by Anambikano pastors in Lagos. Kumuyi was told never to come to the southeast. They kept quiet. But for Operation Python, people now see that war is not a tea party. The president and commander-in-chief, no matter whatever you have against him, has the right to protect all Nigerians. All right. He has the right to protect uh, both uh, Egypt and all people. Gaudi, we need to take a breather, but when we come back on the program, we, we dig deeper into this matter, look at the law, look at the decision of the military, and the point where the federal government is, of course, the decision and the statement of the Senate president. That's after now. Join us again, everyone.